Hey everyone, Hill here. This is the artist comparison review of the Apple iPad 10 2022 versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite 2022. Now this video is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below. And shown on the screen right now are the spec sheets for the two tablets. The first thing I want to talk about is the pricing. The base model of the Apple iPad 10 comes with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage and that's priced at US $450. Apple Pencil 1 is sold separately so that's another $100. So we are looking at a total of $550. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite comes with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage and the pen is included. This is selling for 350 US dollars. So we are looking at a price difference of 200 US dollars. Now, if you want to increase the internal storage for both tablets, you can get 256 gigs with the iPad 10, and that will be 600 US dollars plus 100 dollars for the pen. And with the Samsung tablet, there is a micro SD card slot. So you can buy a 400 gigabyte SD card, micro SD card for just 50 US dollars. So we are looking at 400 US dollars versus 700 US dollars. So that's a 300 US dollars difference. So the Samsung tablet is significantly more affordable, but the real question is whether the tablets are worth the money because a product can be expensive or can be affordable but may or may not provide value for money and if you have watched my review for the iPad 10 I actually said that this tablet is not worth the money when compared to other options that are available from Apple more specifically the refurbished iPad Air 4 from 2020 and the refurbished iPad Pro 11 inch from 2020 but I'm not comparing those two tablets with the Tab S6 Lite because those two tablets are on another level. This is an entry level tablet from Samsung. So between these two, I would say the Tab S6 Lite provides more value for money simply because it's more affordable. But of course, there are other factors that affect whether or not the tablets are worth the money. Let's talk about the design first. So. Both tablets look good and have solid build quality. We have rounded corners for the exterior and even rounded corners for the LCD. Both tablets are quite thin. The iPad 10 is available in four colors and the Tab S6 Lite, if I remember correctly, is available in two colors, but I may be wrong. So on the back, it looks great as well. The design is very clean and simple. This Apple Pencil is, uh, let me just put that away because it can roll off the table very easily and that's US $99. The weight of both tablets is quite close. The iPad 10 is 477 grams. The Tab S6 Lite is 465 grams. So both tablets are very manageable with one hand usage while you are drawing, even with a case on. There are four speaker grills on the iPad, but the sound is only coming out from the bottom set. So if you're holding the iPad this way, your palms can actually cover the speaker. So just beware of that. There is no 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the iPad. As for the Samsung tablet, the speaker grills are at the top. So when you're holding the tablet this way, you will not be able to cover the speaker grills. And on this side, you can see the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. The biometric unlocking system on the iPad is the fingerprint sensor, and this is very fast and effective. To unlock the Samsung tablet, you use Face ID, and this is not as fast compared to the fingerprint sensor, but fast enough. The colors on both displays look good out of the box. I would say the iPad 10 display is brighter. Yeah, the iPad 10 display is definitely brighter and the colors look slightly better to me but it's difficult to tell which display looks better unless you have two displays side by side to compare. The resolution on both um, 
uh, are good as in you will not see any pixelation with the visuals this is quite reflective and there is no anti-reflective coating on it same applies to the tab Essex light this is i would say slightly more reflective compared to the ipad 10 again there is also no anti-reflective coating on this one possible quality control issue with the samsung display is there is this glow here at the bottom edge where the USB-C port is on this review unit that I have. And I also have viewers reporting the same issues on their tablets as well. This iPad display does not have any defects, but this is not a laminated display, which I will talk more about later. The iPad 10 has a 10.9 inch display and the aspect ratio is about 4 by 3. I prefer this aspect ratio compared to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the Samsung tablet because this aspect ratio is more usable in both landscape and vertical orientation. So when you are drawing with vertical orientation, you actually get a more I would say spacious space to work with compared to what you can get on a Samsung tablet which feels a bit squashed when you're using it vertically. It's still alright if you are using a drawing app that has minimal user interface elements on the display such as Infinite Painter where the UI elements don't take up that much space. But when you're using apps that have lots of user interface elements on the display, for example with Medibank Paint Pro, when you have the palettes on the display, you can see you are left with this very vertical space, whereas on the iPad, it's still very vertical, but you get that extra width so you get more space to work with. And this is also due to the fact that this is a larger display. The surface area is larger compared to this. The processor on the iPad is the A14 Bionic chip released in 2020. And on the Samsung tablet is the Snapdragon 720G released in 2020. Now the overall performance of these two tablets is kind of similar. I do feel like the Samsung tablet will lag slightly when you have like a lot of apps open. But on the iPad, even when you have multiple apps, like a lot of apps open in the background, the performance, the fluidity is still like right up there. So that's one area where the Samsung tablet may be lacking. Anyway, if you do feel like the Samsung tablet is starting to lag, you can always close all the apps with the close all button. So the tablet lagging is not something that I actually experience when I'm using the tablet daily. Let's talk about the apps you can get from the Apple App Store versus the Google Play Store when it comes to creating art. So these are just some of the many high quality drawing apps that are available from the Apple App Store. Now the Google Play Store also has a good selection of drawing apps. When you compare the quality of drawing apps available on both platforms, I would say they are kind of evenly matched, even though you may seem like there are more high quality apps available on the iPad. The main thing here is any type of hand-drawn art that you create on the iPad, you will be able to create on the Samsung tablet because there is Clip Studio Paint, which is an excellent drawing and painting app. Procreate is extremely popular, yes, and there is no Procreate on Android. There is Photoshop, which is really good. This is also not available on Android. There is Art Studio Pro, which is great for painting, which is also not available on Android, but you can't say Android has no good drawing apps because there are many. The advantage of using an iPad over Android for artists and designers, in my opinion, doesn't come down to the availability of drawing apps. It actually comes down to the availability of graphic design apps. And by graphic design apps, I'm referring to apps that can handle layout, tags, um, pagination, and create vector graphics. So these are some of the graphic design apps available on the iPad, which are not available on the Android platform. I have viewers who tell me they can do design work with whatever Android apps they can find. 
but the thing is you will not be able to find design apps that have as many features as these apps that you see here on the iPad. If you are just creating hand-drawn art, you can get either tablets. These two tablets are great at creating hand-drawn art, but if you need to do layout, handle text, or create vector graphics, the advantage is with the iPad. And now let's talk about the pens, Apple Pencil 1 versus Samsung S Pen. So this is the first generation Apple Pencil 1, which is sold separately for US $99. This is the one that comes with the lightning connector. And this iPad 10 only works with Apple Pencil 1, and this iPad has a USB-C port here. Before you can use Apple Pencil with the iPad, you have to charge and pair it with the iPad. And to do so, you have to use the lightning to USB-C adapter, connect this USB-C cable to the Apple Pencil and connect this cable to the iPad. Now with the previous iPad models that have the lightning port, you can just connect the Apple Pencil to the iPad directly for charging. But now you need this adapter and the cable. This is actually not too bad if you are charging the Apple Pencil at home, but if you are using Apple Pencil outdoors and it runs out of battery, you may not be able to charge this unless you have also brought out the cable and the lightning adapter. The Samsung S Pen is included with the tablet, so you don't have to spend extra money to buy this. And this pen is not powered by battery, so no charging is required. And you don't need to pair the pen with the tablet because this does not use Bluetooth. If you don't like how thin the Samsung S Pen is, you can get pens from other companies as well. This is the Statler Norris Digital Jumbo, which works exactly like the Samsung S Pen. It is possible to find alternatives to the Apple Pencil, but as far as I know, almost all third-party pens do not support pressure sensitivity, except for maybe a few that were made by Adornit, which is to say that most third-party pens may support tilt sensitivity. They can have palm rejection, but chances are they do not have pressure sensitivity. Apple Pencil is the best dollars for the iPad, and if you are an artist or if you want to draw this is the obvious choice to get because it has pressure sensitivity. Now the first generation Apple Pencil doesn't snap to the side of the iPad for charging and for pairing. So if you want to bring this out, you have to find some way to store it safely. You can just find those folio flip cases where there is a built-in pen slot for the Apple Pencil. The Samsung S Pen also supports tilt sensitivity, pressure sensitivity, and palm rejection. And this pen has a flat side here where you can snap to the side of the tablet for storing. Anyway, with this tablet, you will probably need a case as well. So you can also find a case that has the built-in pen slot. The pen tip of the Apple Pencil is hard and it's made of plastic. So this glides very easily on the glass surface. Tracking is very accurate, so the line will always appear directly beneath the pen tip, regardless of how you hold the pen. Now, earlier I mentioned the non-laminated display, and if you are drawing on this display, this is a hard tip. When you're tapping or when you're drawing lines on the display, you will hear the hollow tapping sound. And because this is not a laminated display, there is a gap between the LCD and the drawing surface, the glass, but it's not a big gap, so it's not really a big issue. I'm not sure if you can see the gap here, but it's there if you are looking for it. It's not a big gap, so it doesn't create any parallax. I just don't like the hollow tapping sound. It is possible to reduce the tapping sound by using silicone pen tip covers like this or silicone or rubber pen tip replacements. So this one is made with silicone and this will dampen the sound. This one is a leather cover. All these are quite pricey. The Samsung S Pen has a rubberized tip when you tap on the display with the Samsung S Pen, it barely makes any sound. And this display 
on the Samsung tablet is laminated so there is no gap between the LCD and the drawing surface so when you're drawing it really looks like the line is coming out from beneath the pen tip and now let's talk about drawing performance the line quality you can get from the pens and from the tablet I would say the Apple Pencil has slightly better pressure sensitivity especially when you're drawing with minimal pressure so for example this is how thick the line is and I can draw thin lines very easily even with a thick brush and even if I don't apply any pressure as long as the pen tip is touching the surface of the glass I can get a line and this is the thickness of the line on this Samsung tablet then let me try to draw really thin lines these lines are still thicker than the lines I can get with the Apple pen so even though the brush looks like they are equally thick and also you do have to press down slightly to get the line if you rely on the weight of the pen itself to draw you will not get any line so you do have to press down ever so slightly to get a line so if you want to draw a really thin line you will have to like reduce the brush size whereas for the Apple Pencil you still have the flexibility of getting thinner lines without changing the brush size that's not to say that you cannot draw thin lines with the Samsung S Pen it's just that if you want to draw really thin lines with a thick brush it's better to reduce the brush size slightly let's look at the slow diagonal line test on the iPad so the lines are quite straight and this is how the lines taper they taper quite nicely quite smoothly and this is the slow diagonal line test on the tab s6 light the lines are quite straight as well it would be difficult to see any difference unless you have two tablets side by side to compare and this is how the strokes taper they taper very nicely very smoothly and very sharply with a side-by-side -side comparison I would say the lines on the Tab S6 Lite are able to taper more smoothly and sharply but the app you use will also affect how the lines taper with Procreate on the iPad the lines are able to taper more smoothly and sharply let's look at the latency there is latency on both tablets but unless I have two tablets side by side to compare it's difficult for me to say which one has better latency response the refresh rate of both displays is 60Hz palm rejection on both tablets is fantastic with apps that only take pen input you will not be able to introduce any stray strokes even if you want to and this app is concepts so this app takes only pen input so you can rest your palm on the display while you draw without introducing any straight strokes let's look at tilt sensitivity this app I'm using is concepts now how smooth the transition is from thin to thick will depend on the app and for concepts the transition isn't that smooth which is expected this is normal behavior for this app let's look at tilt sensitivity for the Samsung S Pen notice there are broken lines here the reason is because when you tilt the pen too low at this angle the plastic part of the pen actually touches the glass which is to say that the pen tip is not touching the glass which results in broken lines so that's where the tapered design of the Apple Pencil is better this is the Statler Norris Digital Pen which has a tapered design as well and tilt works great with this pen both pens are comfortable to hold the Apple Pencil is noticeably heavier and it has this glossy surface and this length I would say it's about the length of a normal pencil the Samsung S Pen is less thick 
so it's thinner but still thick enough to be held comfortably it has a matte textured surface there is one side button which may or may not be customizable depending on the apps you use and this side here it's flat there is no shortcut button on the apple pencil apple pencil tape replacements can be found very easily and if you buy them from apple it's 20 us dollars for four pieces there are cheaper alternatives out there from other companies as for s pen tips you can find them very easily as well they are more affordable compared to the apple tips if you want rubberized tips make sure rubberized tips are mentioned for backups on the ipad you can rely on apple icloud the base plan only comes with 50 gigs of storage and that's probably not enough so you are going to increase that to 200 gigs and that's enough to back up the whole iPad as long as you don't fill your iPad over 200 gigs so iCloud is great because it's going to back up every single thing including your settings and also the layout of your apps so iCloud is great on the Samsung tablet, there are several ways you can back up. You can use Samsung Cloud, you can use Google Drive, and even though it's not mentioned here, you can also use Microsoft OneDrive. And since there is a micro SD card slot on this tablet, you can also transfer or back up your files to the external storage. Battery life with both tablets is good. You can get around 9 to 10 hours with auto brightness. The charging speed is quite slow though because there is no support for fast charging. Let's talk about the ecosystem. If you are using Windows OS, I don't think there is any advantage or disadvantage when it comes to choosing the iPad or the Samsung tablet. If you are using a Mac, it may be better to choose the iPad because there are many shared features. For example, there is AirDrop where you can transfer files directly from the iPad to any Mac that you detect on your local network. There is Sidecar where you can use the iPad as an external display to the Mac. But many of the features are actually also available on the Samsung tablet it's just that you will have to go to the Google Play Store to find those apps that give you that feature with the iPad when you're using it with the Mac most of those features are built in so you don't have to spend uh, extra time to find those apps but many of those features um, that you get with the ecosystem is also available on and with the Samsung tablet. For example, you can also use the Samsung tablet as an external display to your Windows or Mac. It is also possible to transfer files directly wirelessly from the Samsung tablet to your Windows or Mac OS computer. All right, to conclude, if you are just gonna be drawing, if you're just gonna be creating hand-drawn art, these two tablets, I would say they are evenly matched. If you want to do graphic design work, go with the iPad, but not this model. Get the iPad Air 4 or the 11-inch iPad Pro from 2020. Don't get this model. This is, iPad 10 is not worth the money. So the Samsung tablet does provide a lot of value simply because the price point is so attractive. As for me, um, if I were to choose between these two, it would be very difficult to choose between these two. The thing is, I do do some graphic design work, so I will probably go with the iPad. But when it comes to drawing, I don't really mind drawing on either tablets. All right, before you go, if you have an intention to buy either these tablets or any other tablets, do consider using the affiliate links that I have for you in the video description below to support my YouTube channel. I get to earn some commission at no extra cost to you. All right, I hope this video is useful. See you guys in the next video. Bye.